guys welcome back to another video so i know a lot of you guys actually had questions about how does the Huion compare to the current tablets that I use as well as some of you guys highly recommend using the Huion tablets as a um, kind of like a budget tablet or a tablet that's more affordable but very good quality so the kind people at Huion actually sent me one of their canvas 16 um, 2021 version um, pen display tablets so I'm gonna do a quick unboxing and review for you guys and then we can go into kind of a real-time time-lapse version of me doing a demo and drawing an illustration on this tablet for you guys to see while I talk about my thoughts on this tablet so let's quickly unbox things and show you guys what's inside the box as well as brief setup and any details will be displayed on the um, screen so you guys know all the specs and everything and anything that um, I can provide you with it will be all in the description so yeah let's get started okay so I laid a white piece of paper down so you guys can see a little bit better since my desk is dark as you can see here are all the express keys which is quite generous because there is 10 express keys as well as the power button on here which is really tiny and small which is kind of nice because I won't accidentally press it um, but yeah, so it has an anti-glare film on it, which is really nice. I find that a lot of the tablets nowadays do come with this applied on, which is really nice. And hopefully you guys can hear it a little bit. It does have that kind of like matte feeling, but it doesn't have any tooth to it. So it's not anything that will disrupt your work or, you know, um, kind of gnaw away at your pen. I'm just going to do some close-ups of these so you guys can check these out. I believe these will come with the appropriate um, adapter depending on your country and depending probably where you purchased it. Um, it comes with a bunch of cords and I believe I read the back of the box and it says that you can actually connect it with your Android device. Okay, so I'm just going to put this into the video somewhere, but I wanted to show you guys what the... I guess how the tablet works with the phone. So as you can see, I have a Samsung phone. It's the Samsung Galaxy, I believe it's the 20 FE. So it's the fan edition. And as you can see, I can draw on here. I am using Huion Sketch. I believe this is their program that they recommend to use when you're using the mobile version or if you want to draw on your phone. Um, I definitely recommend using this over some other art programs. You can definitely fiddle around, but Using Ibis Paint with this um, tablet and on your phone, it doesn't have pressure sensitivity in there, but this one does, so that's kind of nice. There is a little bit of lag, but if you just slow down to draw, then, you know, this kind of works out really well. There's pressure sensitivity, um, accuracy is really nice, and it's just a really large screen. As you can see, whatever I draw on here draws on my screen right here, so, you know, <laughs> it might be something you're interested in. And yeah, I think that's it. Uh, we can return back to whatever I was doing in the video normally. So here's the pen. Now, if you, I know a lot of you guys probably know my gripes with pens. I immediately know that I'm going to like the, the shape of this pen all quite a bit. So as you can see, it's thicker right here, closer to the tip, and it kind of narrows down like, you know, how most pens do. And then it has a nice body to it. It's easy to hold. It's a good size. And I feel like this is very ergonomic. Now, I'm going to show you guys a comparison. Um, this is the Wacom Intuos pen. I'm not sure how old this is, this model is. Um, I bought it a couple of years ago, maybe six, seven years ago, I think. And then this is their model. So this is Huion and this is Wacom. Very similar um, shape, which is kind of nice because I'm actually more used to this shape. Now, the tablet that I'm currently using is the um, Gaomon PD2200, I believe. And the shape of the pen is not my favorite. I'm not sure how well you guys can see this. Let me see. Hopefully you guys can see that a little bit better. So the shape of the pens, they're kind of different. So I kind of like having this bulkier, um, like, top part of the pen rather than a very like uniform shape and I believe this is just a wireless pen there is no need to charge this now I love the shape of their um, pen holder also has the nibs on the inside I'll show you guys a better shot of this so hopefully you guys can see the nibs 
in here and then it comes with your um, nib remover and how you would remove the nib is that you can see this kind of little C shape almost um, contraption and basically you would clamp down on the nib because there's a little groove right here like a little circle and you stick it in here you would pinch the nib and then drag it out that's how you remove your nibs okay so here last few things to go over it came with a user manual obviously you have to download the drivers online here is a cleaning cloth or a microfiber cloth and the glove that they come with. I'm pretty sure this is pretty standard for all tablets nowadays. So yeah, it's quite nice to have um, a glove, especially for a screen tablet, just in case your hands do get clammy. I might be using this for the, like, the beginning of the video and then I might take it off later just because usually when I'm recording videos, I get nervous at the beginning, but then once I'm getting um, more used to drawing or into the flow of drawing, my hands get less clammy. So I'll definitely use this probably in the beginning. Oh, last thing to show you guys before I forget this. So this is the stand that it came with. So originally it would look kind of like, kind of like this. So it'll look kind of like this. Um, you pop it open and it does have a little like lip right here so you can rest um, your devices on it and on the inside as you can see there's two bars so one bar which you can make it quite low like this which is quite sturdy so I'm not sure how well you guys can see but um, with the first wire up so this you can lead it into these grooves so you can see there is like four sets of grooves so there's this main groove right here and then these ones are for the larger bar so how you would do this is you would set this bar up like this and this is kind of like the first angle that you have which is quite comfortable it's kind of like a like the lowest angle i would recommend probably drawing on your tablet before you start craning your neck over your drawing um, and the next you would use the larger bars and you can get more of a steep angle. I'm not sure how well you guys can see this like this. Oops, sorry like this and then so I'll quickly do general setup off screen come back when I have an appropriate setup and then we can get right into settings. I'll download the drivers. We'll fiddle with the settings and then we can start to draw. So I'll be drawing in paint tool side today as usual. So yeah, I'll talk more about my impressions on the drawing tablet as well as anything if I find any issues or any problems arises while drawing. Um, but yeah, see you guys then. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see the tablet itself. As you can see right here, you have the, the little express keys all down here. I am going to take time and kind of calibrate these. I usually don't use these, but I would use these over a lot of other tablets express keys. It just feels really natural and really nice to, um, I guess like press and hold. I don't know if it's because of the shape of the tablet, but I would use these over some other express keys from other tablets in the past. And as you can see, they generously give you um, basically 10 customizable express keys. Okay, so how I've had this set up, hopefully you guys can see now, um, either via the camera that I have right here, or I'll have a screen recording going so you guys can better see the text and stuff. So under press keys is where you can calibrate individually all your express keys and everything. They do have some defaults already set, but I'm going to change these to something that I would like if I did have to depend on the express keys. Like I mentioned before, I really don't use the express keys that often. Um, I am going to change the pen key as well because I like both of them to be right click just because I use it basically all for color picking and I don't really like to um, fiddle around with that too much. I'm going to change the pressure, pressure sensitivity and usually this is the general curve I like to follow but we'll see how well this works um, when I'm actually working on stuff. Okay, and then I'm gonna quickly go do the express keys kind of off camera. If not, I'll put it kind of sped up and you guys can see what I'm, what I'm doing. Thank you. 
Okay, hopefully this works. I have the express key, so I have the bottom express key um, to print screen. So as you can see, that worked really well and right away. But yeah, so as you can see, pressure sensitivity is great, really responsive. The stand is really sturdy, which is really nice too, and the angle is perfect for how I like to work. Um, and as you can see after calibrating it, this is really accurate to where my pen is. The pen is easy to grip and it's a good weight, so it definitely feels nice to work on. So I'll quickly go and plan an illustration for you guys and we can talk about my kind of impressions on the tablet a little bit more in depth during the speed paint portion or time lapse portion. So how I usually like to do this is that I'll be doing most of the drawing in time lapse with a little bit of snippets in real time while I do a voiceover and talk about my thoughts and feelings about this product as well as a little bit about the process or what I am drawing. So I'll see you guys then. Okay, so sorry for the different fluctuation in terms of mic quality. I swear I fixed the mic, but I guess it's still not fixed. But let's talk about my overall impression on the Huion tablet. So overall, it's very, very good. I find it very much like beginner friendly and it's a really good size, especially um, I don't find it too small or too large to work on. So my current tablet that I am using is definitely on the larger side and I feel like it's still good for like multitasking or having multiple views open in paint tool side or having the navigator like quite large but i feel like the huion canvas 16 is still a good size to use it's very comfortable and very easy to get your hand moving around the whole canvas and i feel like it's big enough for you to view your drawing at a good scale so yeah and not only that it's like on par with a lot of like laptop screen sizes it is a little bit larger than a laptop screen for what I've found but for the most part it's pretty comfortable to use the pen I really like it's very comfortable to hold in your hand and just the it's like a nice weight to it as well um, another thing I didn't really talk about is portability so the Huion tablet because there's not a stand attached to the back of it is severely not severely that makes it sound bad it's super duper lightweight so I feel like if you have like a tote bag or something or like just a larger backpack you can definitely carry this around with you and it's not heavy at all and the stand is also very lightweight so it makes it very portable and the cable management is very simple so it has basically the one cable into the Huion tablet as well as the free in one that goes to your power cord your hdmi and your usb that will go into your laptop so yeah that's kind of a plus um i feel like some other tablets do have like kind of too many loose cords. I know like the current tablet that I'm using has a little bit too many cords in places. So you just have to bundle them up to make sure that things don't get in the way. But I find the cable management for Humion was a lot easier. Um, yeah, so no gripes about that. Um, pretty much I had no gripes about the whole Humion, like Humion experience while using the tablet. I did have a little bit of issues finding the appropriate driver. So, um, some drivers didn't work with my tablet even though it said that was the one I should download and after a bit of trial and error I was able to find the right one that would allow my device to connect properly and yeah so I feel like here on for the price and for the quality it's very 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 good um, definitely something that you guys should look into if you're looking to get a tablet I definitely do recommend that if this is your first time just drawing like digitally on a tablet, I don't recommend going straight into screen tablets per se, unless it's within your budget. But um, Huion does have a variety of other tablets available that are also screen list, so you can definitely check them out for that. Um, as well as I believe they have a larger and a smaller version of the canvas, which is I believe it's the 13 and they might have a 22 inch one as well. So there's definitely more options for you guys to look into. And I just, want you guys to make sure that you do your research on products that you might be interested in 
and just not like follow reviews 100% because my preferences might be different for your preferences or like what I'm looking for might be different for what you're looking for. So definitely do your research to make sure that your tablet would be more of a better match for you rather than a better match for someone else that you've seen online. So um, talking about the drawing itself, I tried my best to leave in some real time footage with a little bit of the sound. Like I said, I was trying to fiddle with the mic so that the mic sounds would be better, but I'm not too sure. Now the mic sounds like it's like muffled and sometimes um, staticky, so it's, it's kind of a hit or a miss. I did change the different ports for my mic and I think it's better. But I don't know, you guys can tell me a bit later. Um, I feel like the audio at the beginning was a lot better. I'm not too sure about the voiceover stuff. It, they just sound more muffled at this point, so I have to do a little bit more fiddling. In terms of the drawing itself, I am drawing my OC Masaki as usual. Um, I find it funny because a lot of you guys think his name is Misaki, which isn't the case. It's Masaki with an A, not an I. Um, but yeah, so I decided to draw him in kind of like this humongous rose bush thing. I've seen photos of this before, kind of like a flower wall that's like covered in leaves and like little flowers poking through and people posing in front of it. And I really like that. I believe there's like, I think it's Theate or might have been Joshua or June, one of them, were in front of this flower wall and they took photos. I think it is Theate probably but it kind of reminded me like reminded me of that so I decided to do Masaki kind of this simple pose with flowers I really want it to, to be more of a darker composition darker scene I guess the composition is very simple it's just him in the center covered with flowers basically or surrounded with flowers so it's nothing too special um, but for color palette, I decided to go with something a little bit more darker and a little bit cooler, which is a little bit different from what I usually do. I usually like doing a little bit more brighter and warmer pieces. So yeah, this was a little bit of a struggle for me in terms of the amount of detail in the background. It was very fun to paint Masaki for the most part um, and fairly easy. I think the hair went by really quickly and his clothing was very fun to do, especially his arm that he has up. I really like doing the clothing folds near like the crook of his elbow. That was very fun. Ooh, I should delete those scenes. Um, yeah, but for the most part, I decided to change Masaki's outfit several times, as you saw. I decided to change it from like the teal to the brown to more of a like a pinkish brown to more of a now dark green and brown. So I was kind of figuring out a different color scheme for Masaki to fit better with this color scheme. So if you guys know, Masaki usually wears kind of like a teal turquoise um, shirt sweater turtleneck a turtleneck sweater and because of that he would have been a little bit too bright for this particular piece as well as that it would have been too close to the background color if I wanted to make it darker so I decided to change his outfit so that his turtleneck is a lot darker and have his cardigan a lot lighter in color so that I could kind of section him away from the background colors which is all these dark greens a lot of cool greens. Now looking back at the footage right now, I can see that um, these flowers look a little bit dull. So that was another thing I forgot to talk about for the Huion tablet. So the, for the most part, the Huion tablet's colors are quite accurate as long as you calibrate them. So I probably calibrated the saturation to be a little bit too high, which made me stray away from the color. Like, too saturated of colors when I was painting. So now that I've moved it back to um, my laptop and I sent the picture to myself, a lot of colors, especially the reds, look a lot duller now. So I might have to go back in and change those a little bit before I consider this a finished piece. But yeah, make sure to color, like correct your colors beforehand or while you're working so that you can fix stuff up before you finish the whole piece. Just try to match it to your most used devices such as like your laptop or your phones or any other digital device where you view like view your digital art. I should have matched it closer with my phone instead of my laptop. So after I switched to a new laptop, the colors on the new laptop are definitely a little bit more saturated and a little bit more like light blue. It has like that 
light blue light instead of like a warmer light coming from the screen like my old laptop so things become more saturated and I matched the Huey on to my laptop instead so that's why a lot of these colors look a little less saturated which I'm not too mad about I think it worked in my favor in terms of his sweater and his outfit and then the background was okay it's just for me it's just the reds that were a little bit too dull um, and I didn't realize it so yeah Mm, in terms of flowers, so I believe you guys saw me write a bit of text on the screen itself saying that like I was looking for references for the flowers or like um, I didn't know how to approach the flowers. So for this particular piece, I did look up references to find um, the flowers I wanted to use for the piece, which in this case is kind of like roses, like red roses in the back, which I thought would have been a nice color combination with the dark greens that lean towards like the cooler side and then I decided to use these really light yellowy white flowers for surrounding with masaki. I just like having a contrast of different flowers and my initial intention with this piece was going to be a lot darker in terms of colors and then having these flowers almost like glow and pop out from within his outfit just to make it stand out a bit more but I thought the concept didn't really fit and I kind of changed the color scheme a little bit when I first laid down the greens so kind of threw that um, idea out of the window and then I decided to not use my references so for the white flowers like the white creamish flowers I did use a reference when I did this, the sketch just so I know what initial forms look like and then I just hopefully store that knowledge into my brain and kind of just doodled the flowers afterwards without looking at the reference which is causing a problem for me um, and for the roses I didn't use a reference now I said I was looking for a reference for the roses but none of them look like how I wanted them to be drawn and I think if I took more time I would have found more references that I liked but um, usually how I approach flowers is that if I especially if I'm drawing flowers I'm not used to I will find references I will do a few like of those flowers using the references and once I'm comfortable with the form I kind of just put the reference away and then I start to draw what I know about the flower now and then that will help me learn how to draw them at different angles and stuff and make my composition a little bit more cohesive in the end instead of just following strictly from a reference because if you're following strictly from the reference it's hard to find certain angles and stuff now the downfall for me was that I didn't use a reference at all for the roses, which kind of makes them vaguely um, plasticky almost. At least I find them plasticky because I didn't know where to place the values or how to render the petals in a way that made them look more delicate rather than really shiny and plasticky and looking really fake looking. I know a lot of people are okay with my flowers looking like this i personally don't i think the flowers like the white creamish flowers looked a lot better they look a little bit softer but that's also because the petals aren't like flowing outwards i had this problems with like i had this problem with a few other pieces in the past and i thought i overcame it but i guess i just need to focus more on the values and stuff and i need to add more color hue shifts because yeah, this I think it's because it also looks really monochromatic that it kind of goes towards the idea of like plasticky and kind of fake looking. <sighs> it's okay. I'm learning. I'm still learning a lot of stuff. So yeah, but for the most part, I actually really like this. Um, one of my friends actually said that it looks like I should use this for like my business cards and stuff. And if I didn't place an order for my mini cards earlier this year, um, or I guess like late last year, late last year that I definitely would have made these for like a business card or something. I might redesign my business card and make it this instead because I really do like the composition and like the colors and like Masaki in general um, because I've always been using like my little derped out wanus for like business cards or my mini cards so it'd be nice to switch over to my OCs for a little bit and this Masaki one is definitely one of my favorites now so yeah. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching me paint Masaki today. I haven't, I feel like I haven't painted him like this in a while. I think a lot of the time I just painted him very like derpy looking, kind of chibi stuff. So yeah, hopefully in the future I'll do a little bit more OC stuff where I'm kind of 
actually doing a whole composition and a whole piece. I would like to do more with um, Koji and Sato for a little bit other pieces, I guess. I don't know what I'm talking. My brain's like racing and my mouth can't keep up. So I'm like stumbling on my words as usual. And my brain's just having a hard time thinking. Um, but I had a lot of fun rendering the leaves, even though there was way too many. I could have got away with making a lot of these leaves more vague looking. I feel like I rendered almost every leaf the same amount of... Um, how to explain? I rendered them to the same quality, I guess, which is bad because your eyes have nowhere to rest on this piece, which is bad, but... Uh, I'll, backgrounds are like my weak spot, which is why I'm doing the wand museum. I'm trying to force myself to paint backgrounds and stuff and figure that out so I can be more comfortable in the future. So that's still something I'm also learning quite a bit while doing the zine stuff. I don't know why I still have my iTunes mini player open. I decided to switch over and listen to um, Stephanie Su's um, kind of mukbang and her telling about crime stories and stuff. So yeah, but for the most part, I was listening to Seventeen the entire time. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching me draw Masaki today. And yeah, hope you guys just enjoyed the video. If Even if you weren't interested in the Huey on review, hopefully you watched the speed paint portion. And I'll talk to you guys next time with another video. Bye!